Alrighty, you guys, welcome back to a brand new episode here on The Ankle. Hey, Ember. Hello, foodie beauties. <laughs> so, you guys, this is a longer one from Foodie today. So, uh, I mean, granted, it's probably mostly just her chewing and sitting in silence. The title of this video, it's a story time video, and it's called My rice -a Recipe with Roasted Something. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys are having a great Tuesday, and yeah. Thank you so much for tuning on in. I truly do appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Like and subscribe. Become a channel member. Let's just dive right on in, shall we, guys? Hello, guys. Welcome back to... Hey, foodie. I'm gonna use the spices. Another video. Today, I'm making a homemade rice -roni, and here are some of the spices I am using. Now, I don't know if you guys grew up on rice -roni, The San Francisco treat. So I'm starting... What? Some vermicelli noodles, and I'm gonna fry them in some butter. Yeah, I know a lot of butter. Girl. Maybe at least like almost a stick, three quarters of a stick. Girl, that's crazy. A little tiny bit of oil, and you want to. Why? Why do you need the oil in there too? Fry the vermicelli noodles until they're nice and brown, like you know how they're white before or yellow. You don't need to deep fry them in butter, dude. Christ, this can't be good for the gallbladder. They want or the non-existent one they have to be brown now so once they're brown i add the rice basmati rice that's been soaking for about a half an hour in some water and i added some chicken stock cubes i added two of those you can see like the thick oil just like sitting all on the top and i'm gonna cook it until it's bubbling like this so you want to boil it until it's got bubbles on the surface like this and then reduce the heat and let it cook for another 14 minutes and here is the result our homemade curry rice rice a -roni. Yeah. okay girl yes and accompanying the rice this evening i have a homemade rotisserie chicken i just put in the oven and uh so it's not homemade girl you popped it out one of those pre like seasoned bags. As you can see, it's juicy. The juice is coming out the leg there with a whole bunch of spices. Just my pretty much entire spice rack. And here is my din din. Hello guys, assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to another. It's a big plate, big plate of rice. Video, this is I guess a mukbang. Um, eat dinner with me, whatever you want to call it. I'm eating on camera. So yeah, if eating bugs you, then Girl, that is literally more than half of your content, okay? And you can't tell me you've lost weight since you were last here, girl, please. This might not be the video for you. Um, it's been a little while since I've done this uh, recorded. Since I've been back, I haven't done one yet. So, let's get two, let's get two! So, I'm just having something I had- mm, You've been watching Zachary Michael? For dinner, you guys saw in the intro how I made the rice. Very good vermicelli curry rice girl it's all butter and just a roasted chicken with a bunch of spices on it you know not enough greens there either like oh my god all kind also like you better be talking about what you're gonna do to you know keep up this glow up that you're trying to do the spices i just throw pretty much every spice i have on it and um put a bit of olive oil so some water and some yogurt so bismillah and let's get to let's get to so this is like one of my favorite meals you guys know i have little baby pickles girl where is the extra jar of pickles and tub of cheese on the side green arugula they have like 20 different cheese products in the fridge you can't tell me she ain't eating it Oh, girl. And I'm just going to really? take a piece of chicken. Your hands. Some rice here. Eat a bite. Ew. That looks about just a few grades better than Amberlynn's boiled chicken. The chicken is nice and tender. Wow. So I want to talk to you guys. I've been wanting to do like... This is going to be such I a playing boring freaking video. I can already tell. Background. Story time. A rabbit. <laughs> of... My travel journey from start to finish. Now, I have done like 
a little bits here and there in live streams, but all right. I'll be honest, I still haven't looked at the couple of live streams that she's done so far. Her live streams in Kuwait just do not interest me. I'll be so for real with you guys. It's so boring. So I find this travel very exhausting. Girl, I bet. I'm exhausted just hearing about it. <laughs> but I also see it as like a challenge and no matter how unhealthy I am, the Aries in me loves challenges. Of course she's an Aries. Oh, that makes so much sense now. My personality. I'm kidding. Not really, but kidding. So my flight was like booked from on, so my flight was booked on April 24th, the Wednesday. And I had it booked for a little while because if you book international flights last minute, it's crazy. Just go on the Qatar website and try to book something last minute. You'll see. <laughs> Mama don't got that kind of money. <laughs> so when I decided that I wanted to come back for sure, I told Salah, he booked me a flight. Why? You know what? I know that she's doing it to try to prove something to the haters that like, oh, Salah helps out, guys. He helps. He's, you know, not a lazy good for nothing. But like, girl, you don't need to be putting how much he paid for shit and whatnot. Like, that's weird. That's weird. I decided to take the same bus I always take. My family always offers to drive me. And you don't want to like see them one last time before you go off, dude? You must, I mean, you know, I'm not going to like talk too, too much on that because there are plenty of us that don't have great relationships with our families, but like, uh, girl, especially my aunt, my mom works a lot and she's very nervous driving to airports because they're busy, but my aunt is not, she's more, I so then why didn't you take her up on it? He's with that. And you know what? I say no. Because I don't really like putting people out. Okay, well, you know what, girl? Here's the thing. You're not really putting people out if they're offering it, for one. And two, you need to learn to ask for help when you need it. I think a lot of people need to learn that. But, like, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. And I feel like she just, she doesn't even try, you know? And I have a feeling it's going to extend to, like, medical care as well. Like, she's not going to reach out for the help. And if she doesn't do that, then nothing's going to happen. For that reason, you know, it's a lot of traveling and it's just gas and this and that. Although I would pay for gas, but, or offer to. <laughs> they would be like, no. Anyway. So, <clears throat> there's a bus called the Orleans Express. It's a very good charter bus, so I just drop my car off. Where do you leave your car? I call a taxi. So basically on the, on the 24th, I decided to, my bus was at 2.15. So I had to drop my car off. So I drove up around 11.30, you know, said my goodbyes, everything. Um, dropped my car, called a taxi at like 1.30. Taxi had trouble finding me, so I was like a few minutes late. Plus, you took, like, the long way to where I needed to go. So I wasn't too happy about that, but... Of course he did, girl. <laughs> That's what they always do. Whatever. Take the scenic route so they can charge more. Girl, I did not miss these videos. Oh, my God. I got dropped off at the wrong location, and that's my fault, because the last time when I came to Canada, the bus dropped me off on the one side of the street, Okay. That's the drop-off location. The pickup is on the other side of a busy, busy, busy street. Huge, like, four-lane, busy office area, like, downtown area. Finally, 2.15 rolls around. And I have my luggage. It probably took her quite a while to go across the street. Like, my... You know, waddling across. The case was 25 kg. I had my carrier... The, the other checked luggage, sorry. My backpack and my CPAP. <laughs> This is so good, by the way. The bus comes on the other side of the road, and I start panicking because I'm not in the best of shape. <laughs> She's like, God damn it, if I have to run. And it's very busy, and the bus doesn't wait that long. They load people's luggage, and there weren't that many people waiting, and then they leave That's from experience. Sure. So I was yelling. <laughs> She's been left behind before. I'm like, hey, imagine me yelling dragging my luggage across the median people are beeping at me because i'm like stopping traffic 
girl. Where are you going and feeding the cat? I saw, I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know if it's a worm in the arugula. Girl. You weren't enjoying it anyway. No, I don't want to eat it. I'm like, I have ick. But all the food that was touching it, perfectly fine. Okay. Anyway, I had to run. And I could hardly breathe because I had to run from... It was like a huge street. And then to the bus stop was like a little ways down. And I was running with my luggage. It was so heavy. I'm having trouble breathing. I'm yelling. And still the bus driver doesn't hear me because the traffic is so loud, right? <laughs> but I do make it there just on time. She was about to close the thing. And I'm like, Ugh. she's looking at me like. I bet she was fucking dying, dude. Probably face as red as a beet. You know, she wasn't the friendliest, honestly, but. Well, neither are you, so. Whatever. Um, usually, they put your luggage in for you. And I saw her putting everyone else's luggage in as I'm running there. And because it was heavy. I'm like, I just need a minute. I'm so, like, I had to run here from, she's like, oh, you were on the other side? I'm like, yeah. So then I'm like, do you mind helping me with my luggage? It's very, very heavy. And um, she didn't say anything. She just kind of like came around my luggage and stood there. And then in front, she's like, well, help me. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Girl, she was not fucking with you. You were holding her up. So I helped her and we both managed to it and then i just did the other luggage it wasn't as heavy girl this is so boring to have to sit through oh my gosh you know what i'm not gonna edit it down i'm not i'm gonna not to like torture you guys absolutely not but just this one time i want you to understand the severity of dead air <laughs> it's crazy like I'm, i probably should have read their policy on like helping people but with their luggage but the guy it's usually a guy and he just always puts my luggage in the thing girl <laughs> what you need to go check their policy to see if this lady was like stiffing you that oh she made you put them in yourself like please girl grow like, up he gets off the bus every time he gets to a stop can you stop being so lazy about it all right i would have just told the girl like i'll oh, just pop the hatch i'll throw it in and then close it myself like <laughs> a hucking a opens the thing under the bus and puts everyone's luggage in so i thought that was what they do <laughs> um, yeah when you show up on time to be fair she probably did see foodie like waddle running her way towards the bus but she was also probably hoping that she wouldn't make it <laughs> nobody sat beside me the whole way made a few other stops mm, wonder why and i was just i like being alone on the bus because um I know my hijab makes my face shape weird. <laughs> Sorry about that. I like to just think, you know, and and just rest. The bus is comfortable. I don't like to like talk the whole way. Not that I don't love talking to my family, lol. You weren't with your family, so what? Girl, what? And you're about to have like a 20 hour flight. <laughs> is that not enough time to just sit and think? She's just such like a secluded person. And which I mean, I get it. I get it, girl. I am too. But like, Christ. <laughs> Finally, I get there. It's like 4.45. I get, a, I get out of the bus, get a cart, put my luggage on it, which is really hard to do. But I did it. And then I get into the, the um, terminal and I have to make my way to, like my flight was at 9.35. That's, you know, I think we were boarding. You board before that. I think 8.30 was boarding. So I made my way to departures, um, which was upstairs and uh, gate like 500, something like that for Qatar Airways. Already there's a line forming. So I decided, you know, like the check-in, I think it was only gonna open in like an hour. So I sat for like 20 minutes and then decided to start getting in the line as more people were lining up. And even then I had to stand for like 45 minutes. Oh, you poor thing. Dude, that was such a big bite. To check my luggage. And the girl said that I was over. My luggage was over. She's like, yeah, it is heavy. You're over by 2 kg. And she's like, it's going to be a hundred. I'm like, how much is it? Like, you know, I'll just pay. It's freaking expensive. So it's going to be $104. I'm like, I'll pay it. I don't care. Um, Girl, you probably could have taken like two things out and put them in your carry-on and be fine. 
And then I told her, I'm like, you know why my luggage is heavy? Because it was my birthday trip and I got a lot of extra clothes. And she was like, oh, I don't want to charge you on your birthday. And I was like, are, are you sure I don't want you to get in trouble? She's like, no. Girl, bye. I have gotten it discounted quite a few times before. That's okay. I thanked her immensely. She's just having to throw in these little side things to make it seem like she's not an ungrateful, horrible person or like her man isn't like a horrible husband. So I was like, okay, because she wanted me to open like transfer from one suitcase to another. And I was like, oh no, I had to sit on that luggage while my, my mom and sister tried to close it. If I open it. Damn, so that was a lot of work. <laughs> you're gonna get hit in the face with a bra or something. <laughs> And she just laughed. So I made her laugh too. So making people laugh does help. <laughs> Girl, you already had the discount. <laughs> How you have an attitude about something really makes a difference. No fucking shit, Sherlock. Is she that daft? Hello? Yeah, no one does deserves to just be treated like shit when they're just doing their job. And you can have a better attitude about things all the time. With how people treat you. She's ridiculous. So I must, when, on travel days, I muster up every ounce of positivity. <laughs> She's like, oh, I have to go out and actually see people, so I guess I have to act polite, girl. Embrace myself for the fact that it could be a total crap show. Like this, this entire video. Ew. And she just puts her spoon right down onto the tray, like, that you know she doesn't wash. Ew. That rice is so good, you guys gotta try that recipe. Like, all this room on the plate to set her spoon down, and she just sets it right onto the tray. So I check in my luggage, get my boarding pass, make Bro, my way to- We're not even halfway through this video yet, you guys. <laughs> oh my god. Security. Everything goes fine. And then I was like, I saw St. Hubert's, and I was like, I really want to eat this one last time, because I won't get to eat it for a long time. Oh my god, that was the big gravy boat that she showed in there. How the hell did uh, that do with your stomach issues, girl, on a plane ride that long? I could never. So I decided to check it out. What do you mean check it out? You knew exactly what you were going for. I got a chicken burger, fries, you saw what I had. And I go to ask for an extra gravy and she's like, ma'am, there's a whole all you can have gravy dispenser. <laughs> and she had to tell foodie, chill out, girl. So for my audience who doesn't know St. Hubert's, it's a Canadian chain, French Canadian chain, a chalet style chicken rotisserie chicken place, so good. And their gravy is what makes them, okay? Their, their barbecue sauce gravy. Ew, that sounds a little gross, I'm not gonna lie. I won't knock it till I try it, but that sounds iffy. Well, their chicken sauce, so good, it's like drinkable. Ew, girl. <laughs> the biggest freaking bites I've ever seen a person take. Oh yeah, can't forget the sour cream dip, yogurt, whatever. Although, believe it or not, I only had one cup. So then I- Yeah, I'm not gonna believe it. Started- Seeing how you asked for extra. Making my way to the gate. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking. Oh, you poor thing. You're having to move like an actual human. For about 15 minutes. She probably had to go like 10 feet, you guys, but it took her that long. And my gate was still pretty far away, so I was like, miraculously, on my right side, I come across complimentary, it was like a little mini train station area where you can wait to get complimentary ride to your gate. So you know what? <laughs> I did that. Yeah, I believe it. But I feel like the guy didn't really want to do it. Oh, he, he comes up and he's like, he pulls the card up and he's like, doesn't say anything to me for a while. And he's like, eventually he's like, you need a ride? Well, why is it that you just stand there like an awkward loaf? Like, say hello to him or something, you know? Christ. I guarantee she just stands there looking wide-eyed. Like, yes, please. I'm like, this is my gate. I forget the number. Oh, is it far? He's like... When they do that, I know it's going to be far, so... I get up, put my stuff on the cart before he can say anything. Girl. He was probably thinking, if anything, oh, she should be walking. And he takes me to my gate. A lot of people are waiting. He's like, you have a lot of people waiting for your flight, man. So I knew right away it's going to be a full flight. We boarded, or you know, on time. I'm not wearing an undercap, so 
it slips. Well, yeah, on that buzzed head. We board on time and I had a window seat and I, um, the guy who had the aisle seat, I said, do you want to switch? Because my stomach was feeling weird. Don't say it like it's a surprising thing. Look at what you freaking had before you went to your gate. Like, please. And I knew I would have to go to the bathroom. Like, I just didn't want to have to bug people to go to the bathroom. Girl, if you know that you don't want to bug people to go oh. to the bathroom, then you should reserve yourself an aisle seat. Like, ugh. Why don't people freaking think ahead? And then it's always someone else's responsibility to make up for their lack of forethought. Like, I was like, yeah, sure, I'll change. Then another guy came, big guy, sat in the middle seat. Oh, God. So that poor dude <laughs> was stuck. I had to get a seatbelt extension. So I was like, you know, ask the lady, the cabin crew for a seatbelt extender. And everyone was staring at me, like everyone, as she was putting it, hooking it up for me. I mean, I'm not going to say that, like, that's right, you know? I can understand that would be a very uncomfortable thing to experience. Not so much, like, having to ask for an extender and all that, but, like, the staring. I don't think that's necessarily right, you know? Uh, mind your damn business. I don't care what culture you're from. But that kind of is like a sad reality you know is that yeah it's going to draw more attention to you girl it was hard for me to do given that like it was so cramped because of the the guy in the middle and me and my size <laughs> yeah i bet but i mean if he didn't need an extender then he clearly wasn't as big as you you can't tell me that there's real hair growing up there absolutely not i didn't really care Whatever, I'm used to stairs. I am who I am. I, I am what I am. I'm in the state I'm in and I have to deal with it. But. I mean, eh, at least she gets that a bit. I mean, it's still unfortunate. I'm not justifying it at all. Like, if I were in that situation, I wouldn't be staring at the person. But, you know, that's unfortunately very much how society is. Another reason I wanted to get the St. Hubers was so I would be full for the whole flight. Girl. You can't go 20 hours, and they're going to give you snacks. You'll be freaking fine. Um, because the tray table doesn't come down on me because of, like... That's... Girl, come on. My size. <laughs> Even at my heaviest, I could still get a tray table down. That's a bit much. It doesn't come fully down, so... Get stuck on the fupa. Usually, if I'm, not, if I'm sitting beside someone, I just won't eat. Excuse me, I just won't eat. Sometimes I have... Please. Snacks in my bag. But I'll get drinks. And I'll just say, like, I'll just give an excuse. Like, they're like, you don't want food? <laughs> and, like, everyone around me is eating. And I'm just like... And it looks ridiculous, girl. It really does. No, I'm just so tired and I don't feel well. And I had a big dinner. Because, honestly, they served din they di serve dinner service at, like, 1030. So it was easy to, you know, just brush it off. And then my stomach really didn't feel well, and so I did go to the bathroom like th like two or three. I think it was two times, yeah. I went. Girl, I go to the bathroom like six times when I'm on a plane. Like, what else do you have to do? I'll get up and go to the bathroom a bunch. I also have like crazy small bladder. I gotta go pee all the time. So, no, I, I'm up and down that aisle a lot. Two, no, two times to the washroom, then once I went just to take off my hijab for a few minutes yeah, i'll just, do like, it just for a walk up the aisle be comfortable so um i fit comfortably in the bathroom but there's no issue there i don't know if the qatar ones are just bigger but they're very nice and girl i have issues in the bathrooms <laughs> i don't know how you don't yeah they had three of them in the back area so i, I didn't worry about taking someone's you know bathroom time I spent about five ten minutes <laughs> so then and being in the aisle you can get out in in and out very easily and i guess i'm just sharing this because as a bigger person you know having all this extra weight adds so much stress to travel you know what though at least you're not blaming the airline for it i hate when people do that which is already stressful for like a fit person so all the walking on travel day i do wear compression sto uh, stockings um like black sock compression socks um that go up to my knees so i'm just kind of sharing my experience as like an obese person which i always like to do i like to talk it out because it's like a bit like very exhausting if this were Anne berlin she'd be blaming the airline left and right 
Like, why don't these idiots have this for me? Then what did I watch again? Oh, I watched Lights Out, but I was like nodding in, in and out because I don't sleep properly when I, without my CPAP. So I slept as much as I could the whole time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm not sure you even sleep properly with your CPAP, girl. You're still always tired. Then, um, yeah, so I didn't eat for that whole 12-hour flight. Just had a lot of water when they would come around and some, like, I think I had, like, some soda. Because <laughs> I was, like, getting kind of hungry near the end. But, like, they served breakfast when we were, like, close to landing. And it was, like, chicken and rice. Again, like, they served chicken and rice for dinner. And then chicken and rice dish like a curry chicken and rice well girl you eat chicken and rice every damn day so <laughs> for breakfast so i was like no that i passed up too but this is probably your first meal of the day and look chicken and rice then uh we get to doha qatar <gasps> excuse me and i had a had a hiccup i have but then we get to doha qatar and then i had like a two hour and some odd change um transfer okay so they had there they had i'm getting so bored with this you guys and there's still like 10 minutes left and carts waiting to take us wherever we needed to go i used the bathroom i was so happy to be back in the presence of a bidet and just like i could smell oud in the air and i'm like i'm in the middle east <laughs> you know you see all the prey rooms and it's just like yes i was pretty hungry and thirsty um i get to my gate I decided not to buy anything to eat or drink. Um, I knew they would be serving something on the plate because Qatar will serve like a mini meal or a, a good sized snack and drinks. Even like the flight is literally 50 minutes. Then why would they serve anything? I've been on jet blue flights that are like 45 minutes and they don't even give you a snack. <laughs> it's just shut up, get in your seat. We're going to be there in like half an hour. I get to my gate and then this lady from Zimbabwe comes up and starts talking to me. She was so friendly. And, and I bet you hated that. And she was telling me her life story, like how she... Um, was coming from Dubai. She moved from Zimbabwe to or South Africa to Dubai. She was going back to Zimbabwe because she got robbed. Um, and she said that she, um, they stole, like, they robbed her of all her things. And she didn't have much. She, she had like a huge teddy bear with her to bring for her daughter. So I felt so bad for Aww. her, like her story, but she was really religious. Like she was Christian and I was like, I will pray for you inshallah, you will be safe and everything will be okay. She was like, she was like 25, I guess. She was just really friendly, like talked. We talked until I had to, to board. I'm like, I have to go, I have to go board my, you know, and, um, my plane i guess she was awkward as hell <laughs> and she was just like good luck and she was very very friendly so she had a, a bit of a sad story that i that i listened to then oh, i hate when this happens sometimes when you bo board a plane you just go in that little tube thing right to the plane door we had to take a bus oh so you had to go up the stairs into the plane <sighs> one of those buses you have to stand up in so i'm like dizzy they make me so dizzy so i'm trying to balance i'm tired i'm so tired at this point it was like a, it was a good like almost 10 minute drive like i don't know how big this airport, <laughs> airport is but to i mean obviously it's pretty big girl the tarmac place where our plane was waiting for us and the amount of stairs i had to go up to get to the plane it was a lot of stairs so I mean, I'm sure for you it probably was. Luckily, it was moving slow, the line to get into the plane, so I could take a break in between the stairs, but they were big stairs too, like high up, so I had to kind of go one at a time, and it was really hard on me, but I made it, and I, the plane... All the more reason to get your shit under control, girl. ...was a really nice plane, and it was empty. It was almost empty. I had the whole row to myself. I leaned back... And I just, like, enjoyed the flight. I love that. I love it when you can literally lay down across all the seats. Like, I, I just dozed off a bit. And they came around. They gave a snack. I, I dozed off after the snack, but it was basically... <laughs> she, she was like, I, I gotta stay awake for that. They give you a bottle of juice, like orange juice. And uh, 
it was like a mini margarita pizza. It was so good. It was so good. So that was good for me. Uh, you know, I was fine with that. I'm sure. And then, um, yeah, we landed in Kuwait and I went through the immigration, whatever you got to do there. And then the, the, the part of travel I hate the most because you're almost there. You're so tired. Then you have to wait for your luggage and that and around it's crowded. People are also rushing for their luggage. It took another, I'd say half an hour for my, just my luggage to get there out of the carousel. So I finally saw my luggage and I, part of me always panics. Like, is my luggage going to make it? I don't know. I always, always like that. I mean, yeah, same same i get a lot of anxiety about that that's why i try to like check all the or not check but like in my carry-on that's where i have all the really really important stuff i don't know why there's like uh oh my hand was causing the lines in this video sorry guys finally my luggage comes i struggle to get it on i go out and you guys saw salah waiting for me it was so I get so emotional when I see, it's just the idea of somebody that cares about you and loves you waiting for you, you know, and you see everyone else waiting for everyone to come out. <laughs> so, um, oh, it was so nice. So immediately he took over the stressful parts, like grab, my, you know, luck, carrying the luggage through. And, uh, then in the parking garage like there was a juice station and he's like do you want a cold juice you could see how hot and tired i was so i got a lemon mint juice cold cold i said he knows like to say extra cold they'll put a bit more ice in it and then they they add a lot of ice and then they strain it and makes a juice um, and why are we talking about <laughs> my brain like completely froze um and then to see the car and just get in the car and be like i can't believe i'm here i can't believe I survived another trip. I've done this trip uh, to Kuwait or to Canada and back because each time I go, it's like a whole day of travel. So to go to Canada, whole day of travel to come back. So that's like two trips, two long trips in one, you know, it, you basically like I go to Canada, it's like a whole travel day, come back a whole travel day, like a whole day of like 20 something hours. <sighs> so I've probably done it at least like six or seven times now. <laughs> like it's, you know, it's, um, uh, that would be a lot <laughs> because I've been three times. So yeah, six, about six times, I think. No, I've been even more than that. I can't remember. I don't know, but it, it was more than, it was a few times that I've done this and every time I do it, I'm like, I'm never doing it again. And I'm always like, how did I survive this? Because somebody with my health conditions, um, with my mental health conditions, especially too, it's just, I don't know how I do it, but I just go into like survival mode and I just get through it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, girl, I guess you'd have to. But- um, I just want to get this video over with you guys. Yeah, so going forward, inshallah, all travel will not be done alone. Salah will be there to help me and... Oh. Because Thailand was pretty easy going compared to this travel. It wasn't as long either. Like 12 hours on a plane is just... Oh, it's so long. 12 hours straight. Anyways, that's the story. This is a long video, I can see. So yeah, I apologize about that. But this dinner was so good. Oh my gosh. What am I? I could eat this every day. Green. Girl, you do. But then you were complaining that the airplane had chicken and rice two times in a row. Oh, okay. Chicken, rice. I, I just love it. Yogurt. <laughs> it's like a complete meal. I could use more veggies, though. I wanted to. I should have added mixed veggies in the rice. That's what was. That's what was missing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hindsight's always twenty twenty, huh, girl? So that's the complete travel story. I just wanted to get that all out there. Nothing major eventful happened. I'm used to sitting beside people now because I see that it's not so bad. Um, I think it's because I'm apple-shaped and I'm more wide this way than this way. <laughs> so, like, my hips do fit within the boundaries, like, within the... Everything is literally just hanging off the front of you. That's crazy. Seat things. It's tight, but... It does do it, I guess. There was one time I took a Qatar plane and with Salah, the plane was different. So it must be a different plane we took. The armrest didn't really fit down very well. I, I showed you in the video, but I was sitting beside Salah, so it didn't matter. But I was lucky. These planes were fine. 
but um, it's just barely. So, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> so you're still pushing it. <laughs> it's a tight squeeze. I'm not going to lie. But it's, I know that I can make it so I don't stress about it as much anymore. Especially since I always have to sit beside people now. Always. There's not usually empty seats. It's usually full flights all the time. So, but from Qatar to Kuwait, usually never full. I think it's only been full once. So, yeah. Because <laughs> I think most people take, there was an Girl, Al oh my God, this is so much ranting. Um, I'll just. Not ranting. She's just yapping on and on. There was a Jazeera, which is a, a budget airline here that, um, Kuwait budget airline. And it, you know. Um, the line for that, like, that was huge. That looked like a full flight. Maybe that's what most people use, which makes sense because it's a lot more affordable. This was just part of the ticket that I had, so that's why I went with it. Otherwise, I probably would have used Jazeera. <laughs> I have used Jazeera before, and they're pretty good. So, anyways, I guess that's it for now. Thank you for listening to my story. I like talking about it. It helps me. And, yeah. You want to talk to your husband? Um, I hope it wasn't too boring for you. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty. <laughs> see how quickly I cut that off? Ugh. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for tuning on in and sticking around if you did. This is a freaking long one. We usually don't do videos this long for Flobber, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for tuning on in guys i truly truly do appreciate it as always let me know your thoughts down in the comments like and subscribe become a channel member and i'll catch you guys in the next one take care